The second round of the World Championship brings us to Belpigue in the north of Spain. The Telefonica Movie Star Grand Prix of Spain, the Circuit de Catalunya, up near Barcelona. Hard-packed circuit of Belpig, 1,630 metres long, began hosting the Spanish Grand Prix in the new millennium. Miguel Pichon leads the World Championship then with 25 points, 22 points for the second place Frederick Bolle on his Rinaldi Yamaha. And in third place, number five, Pit Byra, 20 points to his name on the Vismara Honda. <laughs> On board camera with Josh Coppins, the New Zealander who rides in the same team as Pit Byra for the Telefonica Movie Star Grand Prix of Spain here at the Circuit of Catalonia. Number 73 is the former 125cc Triple World Champion Kiko Kiodio on his Yamaha, his Chesterfield Yamaha. As we head into the first turn now with Josh Coppins, that's what it looks like. Frightening. Coppins looks to have got the whole shot. He's clear away at the front on number six, but alongside him is danger man Mikhail Pichon. And Pichon carves a perfect elliptical arc right round the outside to take the lead. There's a couple of less fortunate men, including number five, Pit Byra, go down, and number three, Gordon Crockard. Gordon Crockard, the Ulster star and reigning British Open champion on that factory KTM. And Pit Byra both go down together. And it was Byra who got well and truly sideways. Colin Dugmore managed to miss the melee, but it caught out Gordon Crockard. The Croc star had nowhere to go and hit the deck. So Pit Byer and Gordon Crockard will have a huge amount of work to do, particularly unfortunate for the Croc star because he was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Mikhail Pichon, absolutely in the right place at the right time. He takes the lead on the Grand Prix Team Suzuki. And already looking so relaxed, glancing for a long time over his right shoulder, just checking out the state of the opposition, looking really cool, sublimely in control. Pichong leads, James Dobbs second on the second KTM, Fred Bolle in third place, Coppins fourth, Paul Cooper on Cassandra is fifth, and the 20-year-old Norwegian Kenneth Gunderson on the Motorex Kawasaki in sixth place. Andrew McFarlane, his teammate, is tenth ahead of Johnny Aubert on the Casali. Kurtz Yamaha and you may have noticed the name of Mark Eastwood down there in 16th place now earning a living the veteran Englishman racing full-time in Spain and having a one-off outing here at the Grand Prix a former regular Grand Prix rider during the 1990s there's Paul Cooper number 16 in a battle with Kiko Kiyodi that former world 125 champion number 73 Paul Cooper, 30 years old now, originally out of Cape Town in South Africa. Won the British 125cc championship for Yamaha 10 years ago and the British Open Championship in 1995. So he's in a battle with Kiyodi and Kenneth Gunderson. Just ahead of him, Josh Coppins. Just behind them, Jussi Weber Leinen on the second of the Cass Hondas. Wild Spanish teenager Manuel Rivas who, excited in front of his home crowd, gets it all wrong and takes a huge tumble. Brave boy gets back up, looks for the bike. It's amazing what it can do for you when you're in front of your home crowd, riding in your home Grand Prix. Manuel Rivas amazingly gets back on board. Miguel Pichon, no danger of him being off it. He's in cool control at the front and looking as if he might be headed under very different conditions for his second successive Grand Prix. Look at that. That was the power slide of a confident man and the French flags are waving for him alongside the circuit. And already the gap extending to over five seconds to second man James Dobb. But Dobber looking good. He was fourth in the first race at the Euro circuit. And he's proving that he can really live with the 250cc Grand Prix boys, as we might have expected. He won a race at the Austrian 250 Grand Prix for Kawasaki back in 1992. Ten years on, we should know that he'd still have that sort of speed, especially after the amount of experience that's gone underneath his belt in that time. 
Number seven, Frederick Bolle in second place on the Rinaldi Yamaha, but Gordon Crockard, Dobbs' KTM factory teammate, is out of the race with damage to his motorcycle. Nick Moore looking to see what the problem is as Frederick Bolle goes down. Fred Bolle goes down on the Rinaldi Yamaha. Desperately trying to restart with that awkward right-hand side kickstart. Shakes his head, clear a bit of muck out of his goggles and uh, confusion out of his brain. And this is what happened to, oh, and a heavy landing that dismounted him side saddle. So Bolle, not such a heavy crash, but an awkward one. And it's really put him down and detuned him. Carlo Rinaldi thinking, that's not what we wanted. Pichon getting tremendous airtime on these superb downhill jumps here at Belle Peak. And beginning to look as if he's really enjoying himself at the front. He's got a big advantage over Josh Coppins. On board with the New Zealander. Coppins on the Honda. His teammate Pitt Byra battling his way through from the back of the pack. So Coppins will have the advantage this time out. Paul Cooper, the 30-year-old South African who rolled his first 250 Grand Prix at Valkensbad back in 1992, up to fourth place here on the Cass Honda. He missed most of last season, of course, with a severe knee injury, underwent surgery and has recuperated fully during the winter. So a good fourth place for Paul Cooper and a spectacular first place in the offing for this man, Mikael Pichon. Looking as if he's really having fun out there on his Suzuki. He leads handsomely the reigning 250cc World Motocross Champion. All Spanish eyes are on him. Pichon, of course, was a 125cc Grand Prix runner back in the early 1990s as a teenager. Here's a man who was a top 125 Grand Prix rider who three times won the World Championship. Number 73, Kiko Chiodi, the tiny little bearded Italian, is now really pressuring fourth place Paul Cooper. Chiodi, who's never really got to grips with a 250. After he narrowly lost the 1994 125cc World Championship to the American Bob Moore. He went on to 250s but couldn't really get the hang of the Chesterfield Yamaha as we move on to a battle between James Dobb and Josh Coppins now for second place. Dobb trying to run across the lines of that Bismara Bernie Honda of Coppins. Trying to make the Honda go where it doesn't want to go. Dobb versus Coppins then. This is the battle for second place. 19 seconds behind Pichon. Pichon doesn't matter after 14 laps. This is the battle for points. Kiko Chiodi has gone through into fourth place. He's fought his way past Paul Cooper. So Kiko, Alicio Kiko Chiodi gets himself through into fourth place as Josh Coppins gets himself in a mess. Coppins with that camera mounted on his helmet gets himself out of shape and loses a place to Chiodi as he does. Fabulous circuit here. Look at the view from up there on the rooftops. Josh Coppins recovers his composure and once again begins to tackle Chiodi. Kubermante staying in touch with the two of them. Meanwhile, Yusuf Evelainen and Frederick Bolle are going at it for seventh place. Rinaldi still shaking his head, hasn't got over the first mistake yet, but Bolle is back on the case with the Yamaha, chasing down the fin as James Dobb once again finds Josh Coppins beginning to put pressure on. Dobb number 64, Coppins number 6 goes for the outside line, then tries to tuck inside. And with the back markers as well, it's a fairly confused situation out there. Dobb, Coppins, this the battle for second place behind Mikael Pichon. The KTM squad getting lustily behind their man. 
And James Dobb, always a great stylist on a motorcycle, looks superb on that KTM. He's a tall man, six feet two inches, possibly better suited to the 250 than to a 125. But the Lizard is finding slightly tighter lines around here. He's really laying that Honda into the turns. Oh, but there's a hay bale gets right underneath the front wheel of that Bernie Honda, and it puts Coppins down. How cruel is that? And that was the view he got of the bale after he'd hit it, which was just a little bit too late. That, of course, benefits Paul Cooper, it benefits Kenneth Gunderson, it almost benefits Frederick Bolle, but I think Coppins has got back on board just ahead of the Frenchman. Bolle comes alongside. Coppins recovering remarkably quickly says there's no way through, but Bolle says, I'll have that line, and just takes it right from under the Honda's front wheel. Bolle not looking that comfortable in these ruts, not looking like the Fred Bolle of a couple of years ago when he was winning world championships for Honda. So some rousing racing going on for the championship points behind runaway leader Mikhail Pichon here at Bell Peak. Kenneth Gunderson, Fred Bolle, Josh Coppins. This is Coppins. This is the fight now for fifth place. Fred Bolle immediately proving me wrong and getting right on the case and right on the back wheel of the Norwegian's Motor X Kawasaki and Paul Cooper's going to be under threat from these guys any minute now Fred Bolle goes right feigns right and then dives left a brilliant move gets right underneath the Motor X Kawasaki and with two laps to go he snatches that fifth place Paul Cooper's his next target and this is turning into a great comeback ride by Bolle after that mistake he made when he was lying in second place Board prepares to go out. I don't think Bolly needs telling that he's got the fourth place man right there in his sights. Paul Cooper, number 16, Fred Bolly, number seven. Oh, Bolly really leathering that Yamaha, giving it all the stick he possibly can, and trusting that those berms and those ruts will stand up to the hammering that he's giving them. Here he goes, round the outside, way round the outside. Has it worked? He's certainly got the speed on Cooper and he cuts right across, but he can't quite make the pass stick. And Cooperman blocks his attempt. Oh, and no, but that's James Dobb. James Dobb's in trouble. James Dobb's in trouble. And it looks as if a rock might have smashed something on the KTM and brought it to a halt right there with less than two laps to go. What cruel justice for the reigning 125cc world champ. So Dobb is out as number seven Fred Bolle gets past Paul Cooper in the general confusion, and that will put him up into third place. And fortune frowning there on Jamie Dobb. This man, Kiko Chioli, is now guaranteed second place in the race if he stays on board for the last lap. And what a surprise that is from the little Italian star. On his last lap then, Pichong leads. Kiko Chioli on the Chesterfield Yamaha through to second place while all around him have had all sorts of incidents in their race. Coyote has just kept battling on and everything's gone smoothly for him, but the stricken KTM is brought back to the pits and what a bad day for Kurt Nichols' team. Both Crockard and Dobb go out. Miguel Pichon at the front, he knows he's out of trouble. Out of everybody's way, he wheelies across the line for his second successive victory in the 2002 World Motocross Championship. And a surprise second place for little Alicio Chiodi and his Chesterfield Yamaha. May not be the greatest colour scheme in the world, but it's worked for him today. Meanwhile, the battle goes on right to the flag for the places. Josh Coppins trying to get back past Kenneth Gunderson, but can't quite make it behind Frederick Bolle on Yamaha number seven. And Yussi Weberlainen, number eight, was also there in the fray. So Bolle takes third place ahead of Gunderson, Coppins and Paul Cooper, who at one time was running strongly in fourth. Behind them, Yussi Weberlainen, Paul Cooper's teammate, ahead of the Kurtz Cazoli Yamaha of Johnny O'Bear, the Frenchman. 
three Frenchmen then in the top eight. And that's with possibly their finest riders competing in the States. Miguel Pichon leads the championship ahead of Fred Bollet and Pitfire, who's level on points with his teammate Josh Coppins.